Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for the Los Angeles Clippers at Golden State Warriors. I'm your host, Matthew Amato, joined by my resident NBA experts, Drew Norton and Jason Gilbo. And just like the Warriors stars last night, Drew had a rest day yesterday, so we're going to utilize them today. You're going to take on the spread. Um, do you think Curry, Wiggins, Thompson not playing yesterday, um, them coming back fully rested for this game is going to make a difference and have them winning by more than six and a 50% point. It could. I mean, it definitely could. I was kind of writing up my article before, you know, it was announced that there would be, that they were basically just going to rest everybody. So it, it, it definitely could, but the problem with the Warriors, they're one in three in their past four home games. Their defense is completely and entirely exploitable right now. LeBron just just about dropped a 60 burger, you know, with a large fry on him. So it, it and, and you know, they could always send a second guy at LeBron and then make, you know, some random person beat them, make an Austin Reeves beat them or somebody like that, but they weren't able to do that. They weren't able to execute that, which is really doesn't make me feel all that good about the way they've been playing. Again, this is a team that without Draymond, they don't have that, you know, high pick and roll with Draymond where he, you know, rolls to the middle of the floor and then they play a four on three game with, you know, Draymond Wiggins, Poole Looney versus three defenders or whatever. So this is just not a team that I feel comfortable backing right now. They've played terrible. They're like basically right around 500 when Draymond Green's not playing. The morale's pretty low. Obviously, like Curry and Thompson getting rest, that's that's significant. That could make the difference in this game, but offensively they just haven't been who they usually are either and the clippers have been the best defense in the league since basically early february believe it or not they have the lowest defensive rating since early february so it's a little bit concerning to me that the warriors are not playing up to their potential on the offensive end and we could see, you know, another outcome where the Clippers, I mean, the last time these two teams played, I'm pretty sure Clippers won by about 15 or something like that. So I don't, I don't like a, a massive six and a half spread like that. So could the Warriors cover it? Could they bounce back because they're rested? Maybe because they got rested, the morale's a little higher. Yeah, I mean, they could. It could be that game. But the Clippers also have been playing the best defense in the NBA for about five weeks, call it. So, to me, this is this is tough, but I'm going to lean the Clippers at plus six and a half. So, I guess this is my turn to argue with Drew. We had Drew and Jason argue in the first game. I'll argue for the Warriors. Incoming bias here, but I will say... I think what the Warriors have been struggling with the past few games is, like you said, containing that one player who's just dominant. LeBron James dropping however many points. I lost count. <laughs> Luka dropping 40. Uh, Jokic getting close to 40. The Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns basically almost got to 40. They have not been able to handle a superstar player on the defensive side. Luckily, the Clippers don't have a superstar player. I would argue the best scoring threat on this team at least against maybe not against the Warriors but Reggie Jackson I'm just not nearly as concerned as a Warriors fan that they can't contain Reggie Jackson I think the team defense is going to play a lot better with kind of like Thompson and Curry clearing their minds going all out tonight knowing they can go all out and not conserve any energy I think that's been an issue it seems like Thompson's kind of not even sandbagging. It just seems like he can't go 100%, and I expect that tonight. Same thing with Wiggins. He like was playing fantastic defense all year, and then all of a sudden I was like, where did it go? And I think we we see it come back tonight. I I mean, I hate to make like a prospective bet on, like, oh, I think they're going to all of a sudden play a lot better, but it seems like Kerr sent the message. Kerr also gave them the rest, and this is the game to bounce back where you don't have that 
elite scoring option on the Clippers that you have to worry about. Like, if you play solid team defense, you should hold the Clippers to under 105 in this game, 104. And I think the Warriors can get to that number um, to, to beat the spread. Yeah, I mean... I don't, I don't hate that analysis for sure. I mean, I, I guess just the thing with the Clippers is before they lost to the Knicks, they'd won five straight, six of their past seven. They've just been, they've just been kind of hot. And obviously I think a couple of those were against Houston, two or three of those. So <laughs> that doesn't even hardly count, but it still should be noted that they've been playing very well defensively. And when they did lose to the Knicks, they only shot 37% from the field. So short of them getting, you know, really, really cold in this one, I don't know. It, it'll be close, though. It'll definitely be close. All right, Jason, over-under? Um, over-under, I'm on the under here. Um, Drew t- touched on a kind of a big piece for me. It's the fact that the Clippers' defense has been really is actually solid of late. Um I, I'm i just kind of at the point with the Warriors offense where I, I really need to start seeing it from some of these other guys. Um, you know, you, you mentioned Clay Thompson and, and him possibly coming back, but, you know, he missed those two games with the illness, came back, you know, shot okay against the Mavericks. But for the most part, I mean, you know, if, if the three-pointers aren't going in, he's not giving you a whole lot. And the young guys have been super inconsistent. Um, you know, we saw a great game out of those guys last night, but we also have seen really, really poor games and the bench has been kind of a struggle. And I think the bench on both sides um, is outside of really Luke Kennard for the Clippers um, aren't going to give you a ton of potential in those off off minutes of, of the stars being out. So I'm going to go with the under um, two of the three games already this year have hit the under. It would just have to take like a miraculous shooting night. I feel like on both sides to hit the over in this one. Yeah, which is always, I mean, we forget because it seems like it's been since literally 2021 that we've seen that kind of out of Curry, but it's still Steph Curry where you're always worried, like, could yeah. he shoot 13 from 15 from three tonight and just blow your over? Um, but I agree. I, I mean, even going with the Warriors, a lot of my argument is I think they play way better defense and we see this end around like 217 two, or 216. Player props. Drew. Player prop for tonight. Honestly, there's nothing I really love here. I don't. I don't really love. I mean, I. I think you could, you could flirt with the Marcus Morris over 14 and a half points at minus 125 if you're okay with, you know, drinking an extra bit of juice. But outside of that, I don't really love anything here. I mean, maybe Zubak over 10 and a half points. I kind of like that matchup. I think, I mean, Zubox got much more control over his body in general and the paint than Kevon Looney does. So I could see Zubak, you know, having 13, 14, 15 points. There's nothing here that just blows me out of the water that I really like, though, to be honest. Oh, I get that. And I do agree. Kevon Looney, since he's come into the NBA, has kind of looked like a ragdoll on the court. And it's just that's the way he he is. He he's just kind of throws big. his body around, and yeah. it, but he, he knows what he he knows what his you know he's an NBA. He got there because he knows his role and what he's good at. But the thing is, is Zubak has much more control over his over his body in the paint. So I I could see I could see Zubak getting twelve to fourteen somewhere in that ballpark for this one. So I guess that would probably be my one. It's, I don't love it, but it's, it's something. Yeah. I'm going to quickly go because my favorite was Zubak plus 175 to double, double. I just think, I mean, I talked about, they all have the elite scoring option, but you can still beat the Warriors down low and Zubak's going to beat the Warriors down low. And I think he probably ends with like a 12 and 12 game at the very least. Um, I think it, Double double at plus one seventy five is a ridiculously good value. I think against the Warriors, most centers should be like close to plus one hundred. Uh, Jason, yeah, it's interesting. I think Zubak was a guy I was taking a look at. Always tough to figure out with him, just because the Warriors can play centers off the court. But not having Draymond Green, that's that's less likely to happen. Um, 
and he's played actually well in two of the three matchups already this year. I'm a bit bummed because all my Terrence man props are just kind of priced out of play tonight. Um, over five and a half rebounds, minus 145, over two and a half assists, minus 150. So the, the value is kind of gone on him. Um, yeah, that's yeah, a bummer. There's just nothing really that I like here. I mean, Curry assist even I've been riding kind of last few videos for the Warriors, and even that's kind of priced up a little bit, 125 on six and a half. So those are the kind of the ones I had coming in, but the values really just aren't there for me. Yeah, I'm going to throw in a quick little same game parlay with Curry um, to, to hit five plus three pointers and then Curry to have over <clears throat> four or let's see. I guess over four and a half assists. I was wondering if I can get over three and a half. I don't, I don't love actually at plus one eighty. Screw that. Never mind. <laughs> I want, I want plus one eighty for three assists and five threes, and I'm getting plus one eighty for f over four and a half assists. No, never mind. All right. Well, that ends my same game parlay for tonight. You're right. There's just so much juice in this game. Every like the reason. I, I like Zubox matchup, and like you said, he played well last time, but the biggest reason he seems like the only person who's kind of like underpriced out of every single player prop. Everybody else is like, like you said, Terrence Mann, minus 145 for over five and a half rebounds. It's just, why? Why? Minus 120 for Clay over 17 and a half. Why? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. That should be minus 105, if anything. All right. We got, <laughs> I'm on the Warriors, Drew's on the Clippers, so once again, we'll see another battle of the lineups. Uh, I think we're all in the under at 225 and a half. We got Zubak over 10 and a half points, Zubak to double-double at plus 175. That's it for today. Sorry we couldn't give you more player props. Maybe you'll find some better values on FanDuel, and you can, you kind of know how we think this game's going to go. You can also throw in your bets in the comments down below, and we'll try and comment on Comment on them before game time. If you liked this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. You can always hit subscribe and the bell to get notified when these videos go up. We will see you for the next one tomorrow. Thank you for watching.